Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here at Charmful Reads and in this video we're going over my five most disappointing books that I read in the year 2018. And we got, let's see, we got two fantasy books, two history books, and one psychology book. Um, and this was like all kind of like really subjective. Like some definitely weren't like the worst things I read per se, but like all the hype that I was getting from them, especially in one notorious example. As you can see, there's a book missing right there <laughs> um, especially if you guys follow my channel you'll definitely know where that's where that where this video is going uh but based on either like the hype or um um other things i've read by that author things like that um i just thought they were kind of like let downs not necessarily the worst thing i read um but let's yeah let's just get started um we're gonna first start with one of the history books and it's in the wake of the plague the black death and the world it made by norman Cantor. Um, Norman Cantor was like a really popular uh, uh, medieval historian, uh, but this book, the first one I have read by him, I have one other book, um, Civilization of the Middle Ages, um, which is like considered like a classic in medieval history. This book just wasn't good, like it just had some really odd arguments, uh, really terrible um, facts and stuff that I knew. There's just some that are just totally wrong. Um, from what I understand though, I guess what happened was I think he like barely finished it and then kind of died and then I assume it was a kind of like rush through the editing process maybe something like that um so maybe it wasn't quite up to what he would have wanted in the end so I'm not quite sure about that um but like I said there were just some really odd facts going on um I think there was like there was a couple pages on like some weird scientific theory that the bubonic plague came from like an asteroid or something which apparently no one else believes uh, I think there was like a random fact on how it took take what it takes six hours to load a crossbow or something. I think that I assume was just like a typo or something. And then there's like a couple awkward um, segments where he wasn't being anti-Semitic per se, but it was kind of like on this like awkward borderline of I think I know what he was trying to say, um, but his argument almost comes across as. Well, the Jews didn't, like, help themselves out enough, so that's why they got, like, attacked and murdered in these villages or just something. And it just came across maybe not how maybe he wanted to come across, uh, maybe in the editing process or something. It just, like I said, overall just was not my favorite medieval history read. Um, I will try uh, one other book by him, uh, probably The Civilization of the Middle Ages, which I already have just to see and make sure that like not all of his writing is like this because then I'm going to just be questioning why he was so popular in the first place. All right, next up we have um, Almeric, which I read on my Kindle. This is by Robert e. Howard, and this was like his kind of foray, or excuse me, foray into sort of sci-fi, um, I suppose, kind of like a very John Carter of Mars-esque kind of feeling going on. Except really the only sci-fi thing is he, this guy, um, Kane Ironhand, just kind of magically gets transported to another planet from Earth, and that's literally it for like, the sci-fi stuff. Um, but he goes to like this planet where these like ape men are like fighting these like black demon things, kinda. Um, I'm just gonna say it's just a terrible read, to be honest, and I love Robert e. Howard. I love my complete Chronicles of Conan over here. I really enjoy it, but Al Merck just, yeah, it almost felt like, um, I'm gonna try like a sci-fi book, and he like literally just like wrote it over the weekend or something. Like, it felt like there was almost like no editing. Um, it was just not good, like, not even like, not. I mean, I know it's like Pulp Fiction type stuff, Pulp Sword and Sorcery, but this was like just terrible Pulp Sword and Sorcery, uh, like, and like some things like would get mentioned in, like in the middle of the book for the first time and then like the next page, oh, we just happened to run into this said thing that we just mentioned that like, might exist or whatever, like a page or two. Then there's also kind of like that kind of um, like undercurrent of like kind of racism and stuff that Robert Howard kind of was. Um, a little bit known for and stuff in that in Almeric as well. So overall, it was just not a great read. Just not fun at all. Just eh, kind of there, I guess. So there's Almeric by Robert e. Howard. Um, next up, let's go to the psychology book, which um, was actually an audio book that I listened to, and it's um, you're oh, shoot. I always mess this one up. Is you're not as smart as you think you are, or is it that or how to outsmart yourself? I don't know, something like that. And then the subtitle is what? What is the subtitle? It's um, How to Beat Mom Mentality by Happiness and Other Ways to Outsmart Yourself. That's pretty sad if I know the subtitle, but not like the actual title. Um, and this is by David McRaney. 
in I don't know, this book just it wasn't like horrible in the sense of like what it was covering, I suppose, but it just was really annoying. Like it just read like this guy like I picture this guy going to college uh, as a college undergrad graduate going for psychology and you know coming home after his first year and then just trying to like stump everyone with like little psychology like brain teasers or just like kind of like little like kind of tricks with psychology and stuff on like why people like you know mispronounce certain things or if you ask him a question why they'll like blurt out like an answer instead of the right answer or something um it just has kind of this gimmicky feel like just that the author is just an annoying person to be honest um a lot of the stuff that he covered too was kind of like common sense type stuff if you just like you know stand back and think about it but obviously you know people don't do that in every situation which is why like you know, psychology kind of comes into play but overall i just did not like i don't i didn't like the narrator which i think was because i didn't like the book and like therefore i didn't like like what the narrator was narrating because i almost i don't think i've ever criticized like a narrator like ever uh to be honest so overall i just had a I just like left a bad taste in my mouth and i don't know just wasn't I guess what I thought it was gonna be. It was just I don't know. I can't describe it. Just I don't like it. In I don't think you guys should listen to it unless you're like really hardcore into like uh, psychology, like mind tricks and stuff. All right. <laughs> now that we got that random, and I think that was like one of the only. I think that was probably. Now I guess I read a couple books on consciousness, but like that, I think that was like the only pure psychology book that I like listened to or read in 2018. Next up, we have a really popular history book from the 90s, How the Irish Saved Civilization, the untold story of Ireland's heroic role from the fall of Rome to the rise of medieval Europe by Thomas Cahill. And he's able, he's been able to write like a whole like seven series book, or seven series, seven book history series called like the Hinges of History because of the success of this book right here. Um, but yeah, let me just sum up the book for you right here. So during the Middle Age, okay, so after the fall of Rome, a lot of the ancient text, um, obviously because they were written down um, by hand since there was no print and printing press, um, like kind of monks generally um, sort of acted as scribes and copied over the ancient text and kept them preserved until like the printing press. Um, but basically all these Irish monks saved pretty much all of Greek and like Latin text for um, like, like the Renaissance and everything so it could be remembered forever except the Byzantines and a couple other cultures did the same thing. This literally, like, <laughs> the subtext of the book. Um, I have absolutely no idea, like, what the point of the book really was, to be honest. Um, besides that, just, I don't know. If you guys have, it's, like, really popular, too. If you guys have read it, tell me, like, why you guys, like, liked it, or if you've heard about it, why. I don't, I just... It's like literally the most oversold title and subtitle I've ever heard. Um, and I like Ireland and stuff. I like learning and reading about Ireland, but you know, did they actually save Western civilization? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a questionable thing, especially when even in the book, they kind of admit, yeah, the Byzantines kind of did the same exact thing, except probably better, so I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so there's how the Irish saved civilization. And I have these the Greek book in the series. I can't remember what it's called. Is it Sailing the Wine Dark Sea? Yes, it is. And I haven't read it yet because this one was not good, so we'll see about that. And lastly, if you guys have followed my channel, you will know what fantasy book I'm going for in what, one of my most kind of un like, overhyped, disappointing reads of 2018, and it's Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings, book one of the Stormlight Archive. And I know that's going to be heresy for some people. I don't understand. It wasn't bad. It wasn't like terrible. It wasn't bad. It was kind of, to me, it was just very meh. Kind of meh. You know what I mean? Just middle of the road here. But this book, when I checked Goodreads earlier this morning, 4.65 stars out of 5 with 222,000 ratings. Like, what? What? What is that? How is it so, like, like just universally, like, adored and stuff? Like, I don't understand. Like, I'll admit, okay, the world building's really good. World building for me is, like, one of my, one of my lowest things, I guess. Like, out of, like, the big kind of cat- or what- parts of a book, I suppose, of fantasy books. Um, the characters were uber flat, which is like the thing I look for in fantasy books. The characters are literally just cardboard cutouts 
literally the main character, Kaladin Stormbusted, is the biggest Gary Stu I think I read all year. Out of all this, well, I mean, I guess I haven't read all this, but out of the 40 or 50 fantasy books I read, he's literally the most Mary Sue type character I've ever read in fantasy. So there's that. Like, I will admit, the plot is pretty good. Um, like, there's definitely no holes in the plot and stuff, at least so far, except one, um, which I covered in my discussion video, um, which I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll put a little card thing up there, um, that I talked with my friend Tim, uh, basically, you know, we have this country with all the princes and everything kind of banding up together finally, and they're going out doing their stuff with, like, the entire military of this country for years and years and years and years, and then apparently no one invades them because they're just, like, one country out of, you know, like, a dozen or whatever. Um, I don't understand that, but... Maybe that gets covered in the next books. Um, everyone talks about the magic system. Yeah, the magic system is good and everything. He literally writes like a textbook in this book explaining every detail about every single facet of the magic system. And I think like it was at the first or second chapter, it's almost like reading like a video game tutorial. This is the first binding. This is what the first binding does. This, 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 and that. This is the second binding. This, 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 and that occurs when the second binding happens. Like, it's just like... Oh, so cringy. I don't understand. Like, I just... I don't know. Everyone tells me Words of Radiance is better than this one. I don't know if they mean, like, it's just better in all the stuff I don't like about this book. <laughs> like, it's just, like, even more over the top. Or if it actually is, like, a little bit different and better. There is one character that I really enjoy reading about, and it was Dalinar. Every other character, I just was like, eh, whatever. And, but apparently Dalinar is kind of like a focus in the second book, I believe, or has more of a focus... Uh, was it the next one or Oathbringer? One of them. Um, he gets more of a focus. So I think that's going to be better, definitely. So I will be reading Words of Radiance at some point. I don't know. Just saying. I will at some point. But yeah, tell me why you guys really enjoyed Brandon Sanderson. And also his um, actual like prose writing style. I mean, it was like adequate or whatever. But I didn't think it was like anything special at all, to be honest. Like it was just kind of just middle of the road as well so i'm not i'm just not understanding why the storm of archive and brandon sanderson journal is like such a big popular thing um so yeah definitely leave some comments down below about that book or uh any of the other books i talked about or the authors um, if you enjoyed them or didn't like them if you you know agree or disagree stuff like that definitely leave some comments down below um just tell me what your most disappointing read of 2018 or one of your most just kind of recent disappointing reads um, has been. I'm definitely be glad to talk to you about those so I can avoid those as well. Um, but yeah, um, even if you end up reading a disappointing book, you know, just always remember, read victoriously.